Engineers Australia responds to the Opal Tower. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. Once again, I've got my stein of coffee, and I thought we'd have a look at the Engineers Australia response to Opal Tower. Now, Engineers Australia is one of the, how should we say, or governing bodies or organizations uh, for engineers in this country. So let's read through it. Events like Opal Tower are shaping the future of engineering, and that isn't a good thing. Okay. The final report into the causes of the structural dam damage to Sydney's Olympic, oh, sorry, Opal Tower says the damage could have been avoided if an engineer's registration system was in place, along with other key recommendations. As engineers and builders now look to fix the major problems caused at Opal Tower, is it time state and federal governments take the common sense approach and adopt recommendations that have been around for years. The final report released in February found the cracks that appeared in the tower were largely due to an as-constructed hob beam panel assembly being under-designed according to national codes. The first of the three recommendations in the report included introducing a register for engineers to ensure professionals have a high level of competency and recognized qualifications. Now, I'm going to add a title card to the actual engineer's response to the report. Okay, I'll add that right now and you can have a look at that episode where I read through their response. The recommendation is one the New South Wales government said they've already committed to. This is good news for the industry and Engineers Australia as it has been proposing a registration scheme for all states and territories for years. Yes, well, frankly, I was surprised to realize that they didn't have one in New South Wales. I was a little shocked, to be honest, that they didn't have it. Here in Queensland, you, you, you want your engineers to be licensed. You want to have a body that checks their qualifications. It just makes it easier for me as a consumer of engineering services, which is an architect I am. And frankly, my livelihood and my house, you know, that I'm risking in a, running a business is dependent on the competency of the people I employ. Particularly if you're an architect and you hire engineers to work under you as a subcontractor, you're liable for them. A look at back how events unfolded. For the past two months, Engineers Australia spokespeople have been providing advice and information on the incident which left thousands of residents homeless up to the 34-story Opal Tower apartment building formed severe cracks on Christmas Eve 2018. A day after the structural damage occurred, New South Wales Minister for Planning and Housing, Anthony Roberts, announced that an investigation had begun. Now, I will add a title card to my video I did on the interim report, and you can have a read through that. I'm still working on going through the final report, but I'll get there, don't worry. Under the direction of the New South Wales Government, engineering academics, Professor Mark Hoffman, Professor John Carter, and Professor Stephen, Foster, Stephen Foster, sorry, were brought together to investigate the Opal Tower incident and produce a report of their findings. Engineer, Engineers Australia CEO Peter McInty met with New South Wales Minister for Better Regulation Matt Keane to encourage the government to adopt the recommendations of the Building Minister's Forum Building Confidence Report, that's a long one, another one, launched almost two years ago. A key recommendation from the Shergold and Weir's Building Confidence Report called for registration of engineers to be harmonized around the country. I've read through that report and I will once again add a card to it right here, right above me. Now, if you're watching this, let me know in the comments if I've actually managed to sync them all up because it's a bit of a challenge. But if you want to listen to my uh, reading through of the report and some of the interesting things in it, have a look. The Shergold Weir report outlined recommendations around training for building practitioners and engineers and a consistent approach to the registration of certain categories of building practitioners. Calling for action. Not long after the Opal Tower disaster, the media sought experts from Engineers Australia to make sense of how something like this could possibly happen. Engineers Australia Executive General Manager for Strategy and Transformation. That is a long title. Brent Jackson spoke to The Australian about the investigation's interim report that showed there were a number of construction and design issues with Opal Tower. Our advice to the New South Wales Innovation and Better Regulation Minister, another long title, <laughs> Matt Keane, and other organisations is to develop a timetable to implement all of the recommendations in the Shergold We report, Dr Jackson had said. Yes, 
That seems like a fantastic idea. Engineers Australia Public Affairs National Minister Jonathan Russell spoke to The Guardian on how certifiers often didn't have qualifications or experience to make an informed judgment about the quality of work. Yes, that is definitely true. It is that they need to depend on other professionals, just like I need to depend on other professionals to do my help me in my job. You know, that's normal. The person who paints the structure needs to be licensed. The person who designs the structure does not. <coughs> that's uh, that's crazy. Only in New South Wales, here in Queensland, they do. So don't worry, guys. In the article, Mr. R Mr. Russell also recommended that state government take on all recommendations from a previous Engineers Australia report from three years ago. I might have a look at that in another video around New South Wales building certification system. I would be shocked if it doesn't just repeat what we've read in other reports, but I'd be willing to go through. One thing that my wife, she did, Rachel did a, her undergraduate thesis in architecture on building legislation and fire safety and how it affects the design of buildings. <clears throat> And one thing she found was that whenever there was a disaster, there would be a, um, a legislative response. So sadly, there needed to be something like Opal Tower. And back, you know, a century ago, it was much worse. It was often, you know, factories full of seamstresses all burning to death because the fire doors were locked to keep them inside. Things like that. <laughs> Pardon me. So... The fact that we're responding to a disaster is there's significant historical precedent for that. And Rachel did an interview with uh, ABC Radio about the Q1 tower down the Gold Coast and how the design of the fire escape compartments for the fire escapes, there's some big issues with it. So I'll put a card to that video or a link. I'll put a link to the uh, audio of that right now. You can have a look at that too, if you're interested. The report found 85% of new strata units were defective on completion. Whoa. And the system in New South Wales had broken down. Okay, that, that is insane. 85%. Scheisse. Do you think YouTube would pick up Scheisse as a swear word and demonetize my videos? Nah, no, never. Mr. Russell also spoke uh, to create spoke to create about the need okay is that someone's name maybe i'm missing it anyway spoke to create about the need to bring in nationally recognized engineers register yes well our message for them was to start action on registration for engineers quickly because we don't want to be left behind action together now means that the system will be truly harmonized and has a better chance of being effective i mean we don't even have a national recognized registration for architects you need to register in each state. You've got mutual recognition, but you've got to pay extra fees, which is just stupid, really. Really is. It's a waste of money. I mean, how hard is it to have one database managed by five people for the entire country? Really? How? But that's how our country works. As Engineers Australia spoke to more and more media outlets, even journalists were surprised at the fact no formalized engineer's registration system existed in New South Wales or many other jurisdictions. Yeah, I know. I know. In an opt-ed for Fairfax, journalist Elizabeth Farley said it was nuts that engineers in New South Wales went about their work unregulated. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's concerning from a consumer protection point of view final report is released. When the final report on Opal Tower damage was released in late February, it was already clear what the government needed to do. The report found the hob beam and panel assembly, assembly that caused cracks did not meet the design requirements of the NCC or Australian standards for concrete structures, as reported in Create. Ah, okay, this is their, their in-house magazine, I'm assuming. In the report's first recommendation, it echoed what Engineers Australia had been championing nationally creating creation of an engineer's register for all jurisdictions now one one thing i'm just gonna say i'm gonna add here you have to realize that this is a voluntary body joining engineers australia is a voluntary body and often some of these organizations push for registration because it allows it helps them increase their membership and it gives more legitimacy to their organization so they can start providing pd courses they can provide uh, courses and training that people are required to do to be part of their body. So it kind of turns it into a, you know, 
a guild somehow, I guess. You know, the Institute of Architects here in Australia as well, they provide they wanted PD in Queensland because they, they make money off it. They make money off it. One thing I can count my uh, talking about these issues as professional development. So there you go. Cheers. That's ah, good coffee. Registered engineers should have a high level of competency, including recognized qualifications, benchmarked international edu- education standards, the Opal Tower report says. Along with minimum CPD requirements, the report goes on to suggest a co-regulatory system managed by government in partnership with an appropriate professional body. Oh, look at that. So, not that I have any issue with it, but you just need to be aware when you're reading these things, when there is an inherent potential for conflict of interest with these organizations putting it forward. You know, I'm sure they'd be clear for it. They'd, they'd want to. They'd push for it because it'll it'll help them. It'll probably help the profession too, that you can't have. Nothing's worse than studying your ass off, getting qualified, getting registered, doing all your training, and then some dodgy bastard doesn't do any of it, and a certifier just ticks off on their qualification because they feel like it. I've had many a drunken argument with certifiers over how frustrating that was. What was more damning was on the bottom of page 14 of the report. The report states that if the first three recommendations, including an engineer's registration system, were in place, it would have significantly reduced the likelihood or avoided the Opal Tower damage. I don't, I don't agree with that. I'll need to go through that report and justify it, but in detail, I haven't gotten up to that part. But based on what the original engineer said, they didn't approve the changes. So how would any of this have been any different? And I bet you, I I will put a carton carton on here that the engineers at WSP were registered in Queensland with RPEQ. Bet you they were. Bet you they were. Because I know, because I've gotten fee proposals from them before. So, you know, okay. I'll need to go through that and challenge that. I'll put a little reminder star there. At the same time of the report's release, New South Wales Better Regulation Minister. Just that title, Better Regulation Minister. How can you have better regulation? I don't know. I, I don't know. Matt Keane went further and announced the government would also be in adop- in adopting recommendations in the Shergold and Weir's report. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. There's a lot of good things in there. Mr. Keane said this included appointing a building commissioner, a recommendation that is now more than a year old. Well, yeah, I mean, it's to, because we government doesn't move unless it is pushed. The natural state of government is status quo. You know, you need, if you've got a mass and government is a hell of a mass that is stationary, <laughs> you need force to push that mass. You need force. And sadly, I think in many ways, the political left with all this PC social justice identity politics BS, is quite effective at moving that mass, much more effective at, than conservatives or, or right-leaning sides of politics. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing that now. If you, you know, I'm getting, I got a letter the other day, an email from a gentleman in a practice uh, saying that you know, he likes watching my content, he agrees with a lot of my views, but he can't admit it in public because he's a business owner. I frankly, sure, I will discuss some uncomfortable topics, but it's nothing that I think is controversial. But that's the problem. To PC people, it is. And that's the sad thing. So people just shut up and get on with their business and don't open their mouth, which is kind of my mistake, because I do. I went to an event the other day and got into an argument about politics. But, you know, you just, when you realize you're bad, you just, you know, you make your bed, you go with it looking to a safer future for communities. In the days after the release of the report, Engineers Australia CEO Peter McIntyre, I know I got that wrong last time, had the final message in ABC's PM program, making the point once again that national registration for engineers was still needed. Unfortunately, at the moment, anybody who calls themselves an, anybody can call themselves an engineer. Well, okay, they can, but it's the due diligence of the project manager to ensure that they're qualified. You know, that, that's been interesting. There's been very little discussion about the role of the project manager in this, even though uh, an example would be the lacrosse tower. I went through the court case there and the, the outcome and the different relationships there. But, you know, there's been no, I haven't found a response from the project manager about Opal Tower and no discussion there. It really would have been their job to ensure that the people are suitably qualified. 
but they, of course, would have pushed that onto the certifier. And it just becomes a game of shift the blame. Thankfully, most people working are professional and have the right skills and competencies, but that's no gar- there's no guarantee of that. There is no legislative teeth, teeth behind EA's National Engineering Register. We disbar members and warn members and control them on our register, but they can simply leave the register and go and practice in the shadows. In the shadows, how they're framing it. Maybe they don't want to be part of the gang and not pay for it. I mean, I, I've left the Institute of Architects, so I can't use RAA after my name anymore. And I was involved a fair bit, you know, Rachel and I. And uh, yeah, you know, it. you need to add up the cost of being involved. I think it was, what, two and a half grand a year for us both in our practice. It's a lot of money for a little return for a magazine and a few events. But if you go there and really take advantage of it, then you get your money's worth. But we got four kids, so that's not going to happen. Engineers Australia now looks towards attending the COAG Building Ministers Forum to push for a harmonization and national registration system for all engineers working in Australia. While Opal Tower was an unfortunate event for hundreds of families, it has uncovered what many in industry and government have shied away from. Engineers Australia's priority is to represent a broad engineering community, at the same time advocate to government and communities about the importance engineering plays in everyday lives. This function is key is a key role of Engineers Australia, but also a challenging one. As the industry looks to go about fixing the problems made in the aftermath of Opal Tower, the discussion continues now with much more pressure on what's needed to happen. So, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think it's just a push from a professional body to try and get more legitimacy and cre- increase their membership? Or do you think it's a, a body that realizes the problem in that industry and it represents the professionals and needs to have some legislative teeth behind it for consumer protection? I'd be interested to hear your comments. Please leave them in the comment. Uh, leave your comments in the comments and let me know. And we can have a chat. Guys, thank you all very much for joining me for this episode. Please like, share the video and subscribe. It really helps uh, build my audience and get more people watching. And ding the bell and watch me try and do two videos a day for March. Let's see how it will go. Take care, everyone. See you later. Bye.